Hello everyone, this is Hadrian. Thank you for watching. Let's play some more Crusader Kings 2 in our Lord of the Scots series. This is episode 20 of Lord of the Scots. It's been a great run so far. For those of you who are new to the channel, just a bit of a heads up. And if you're not watching this live, if you're watching this in the backlog, what I'm about to say probably does not even apply to you. But just a heads up, this is going to be the last episode of Crusader Kings 2 Lord of the Scots for a bit. The series is not going anywhere, don't worry. But on my channel, I do uh, content switches every 10 days in each time slot, which means every 20 days for each series, every 20 episodes, uh, we will switch to either a new series or return to one that is not finished yet. So we're going to switch back to Eternal Empire in Total War Attila, where we are trying to reestablish the Roman Empire from the perspective of the Eastern Roman Empire. And we're currently up against Attila himself. He's finally declared war, and we are itching. I know a lot of you are anxious to get back and see how that conflict goes now that we're finally at war with the Huns. But anyway, this is Crusader Kings 2. We've got one more episode to play, so let's go through and see what we can make happen. So, in the last episode, uh, two episodes ago actually, King Ewan died, and King Alexander took over at the age of 14. He's now 19, so five years have gone by. We have converted to feudalism. We have converted to... Oh, wait. Your dog is growing quickly and is no longer a little puppy. He runs fast and has a keen nose. He bites hard, too, as several of the dog handers can testify. So we gain some prestige for that. So we actually, actually have a good amount of prestige as King Alexander, which is good. We're also building up our castles in all of our central territories. Tell you what, let's go ahead and have a feast. Wait, can we not? Oh, I don't have any money. Can I gain money before the end of the month? Please give me that 25th gold, please. Come on. Damn. All right. Didn't get it. <laughs> so we can't hold the feast right now. We spent a lot of money setting up those upgrades. So it just, yeah, it, it took a little bit longer than anticipated um, to, to get that 25th gold. And now I have it, of course. It's the 19th of January, and we can no longer hold a feast because just announcing a feast at the beginning of January is just absolutely the wrong thing to do and would never fly with anybody you can't hold a feast in january it's nonsense while walking together with bishop natan and discussing my finances we met a couple of beggars i knew he did not approve of alms but the young mother with no shoes and a wailing baby could not be ignored again alexander is kind uh so he was i uh, know he's charitable is what that was duke to has a problem with my generosity towards the poor so Telurg's going to have to deal with it. Telurg is, of course, one of our good friends. He has a really high opinion of us, despite what we just did. Oh, <laughs> he owes money to Jewish moneylenders. So evidently he is in debt. Awesome. So our army levies are slowly regrowing after the conversion to feudalism. It always takes a moment because all of the tribal armies become uh, garrisons for castles. So there's fewer men. And uh, it takes a really long time for the entire force that you're accustomed to having prior to the conversion to feudalism um, to convert. If you've ever converted to feudalism right before a major war, which I kind of did in this series, but as a newer player to Crusader Kings 2, it's possible to make that decision thinking, oh, this is an upgrade, this will make me stronger. Yes, but it will actually make you weaker right away, and then you will slowly regain your strength. Notice we're back up above 2,000 troops now. So it's just something to be aware of. We're going to hold a summer fair. Should make the peasants happy. Do we have our... Are you collecting taxes? Good, you're collecting taxes. Ah, uh, here's the monkey <laughs> attacking the dude. Here's, the, here's your money, I don't ever want to see you again. We've seen that probably three or four times now in the course of the campaign. So again, for those of you who might just be jumping in... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Interesting. Prince Ansovald, our cousin, who is... Oh, okay. This is their... Okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. Um, but we are cousins because we've been married to these guys... Um, for a couple of generations now. So he is actually a blood relative, even though he was born in France. Uh, they want to arrange a betrothal with Brevik. Sure. Strengthen our ties with West Francia. Let's see about maybe upgrading that alliance, shall we? 
How do, yeah, form alliance. He does not want to. I can't send a gift because I don't have enough money. All right, here's the... <laughs> and once again, we see the monkey event. Wow, that's happening a lot. So, I think I was about to say a moment ago, if you are just joining us, it was great fun while it lasted. There's the, uh, the end of the summer fair. We are playing as Pickland, and we are going to try and convert to Scottish culture, and then we're going to try and just take over the British Isles as Pickland, and have a Scottish-controlled empire. Either the Empire of Britannia, ruled by the Scots, or a new empire, an actual Scottish empire, controlling all of the island of Britain. That is our goal with this series. Oh good, speaking of that, we have gained... Uh, we have actually lost some money there. Um, but we've gained a claim on Connacta. So, as soon as I'm not bankrupt anymore, we're going to send some soldiers to take over Connacta. Ooh, what's happening here? Duke Alessander. Okay, so there's a faction. Oh, that's really annoying. I can't send any money right now. That's unfortunate. Oh, that really sucks. Normally what I do in this kind of situation... Hang on, can I grant you an honorary title? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make you Seneschal, just to make this guy like me more. So, this this guy is trying to make our brother the rightful king. And also, it looks like there's a faction that started for elective succession, which is adorable. Um, My food has tasted strange lately. I've begun to eat less and less for fear of being poisoned. I don't trust the spy masters to find the poisoner. The only one I can rely on is my friend. With my friend, we'll find the poisoner and put a stop to this. So we need to wait. Oh my god, this is so frustrating. This is the worst possible timing. Can I maybe... Yeah, this is terrible, terrible timing. I need to be able to send a gift to this guy, but I can't. How much money is he going to require for a gift? 55.6. Crap! Alright, so we're going to borrow some money. That's what we're going to do. Now we're going to send some money... So we just borrowed some money from the Jews. To be completely sure the food was or, uh, was or was not poisoned, Duke Tillerg paid or required certain expensive equipment, and I was the one to pay for it. Although the food tastes strange, I do not feel any different than before. The question is if this really was necessary. Do I really want to know? Of course I need to know. Take all my money. I did just borrow a lot of it. Alright, so I really, really want this faction to go away. Good. It's gone. <laughs> uh. Oh, cool. I'm, I gained an intrigue from this... Uh, a point of intrigue from this whole... Uh, from these shenanigans. So, I can repay... Unfortunately, I, I will need 350 gold, but I can repay the Jews and be done with that, and our temple vassals will not dislike us as much. Oh good, we have a pretty good chance of gaining some technology points thanks to our spy master in Constantinople, which is good news. Alright, so we're going to research cultural tech in our capital with our court chaplain, now that we have that ability. I'm adjusting to the new abilities I have as a feudal lord. So we have a claim on Kanakta, and we should probably use it. Alright, so we have launched that war. Let's go ahead and... Get all of our men into position. Looks like they have an army of just 500. Ah, oh, crap. So we had a small army <laughs> that was raised in Tirganal that is now gone. Because we didn't get there in time to defend them from the 500 armies. The, the 500 units of this guy. Which is fine. I now have a lot more than he has ready to converge on his forces. Okay, wife is pregnant again. Very, very good. 
Alright, so that army is now thoroughly beaten. We're going to send them to Kanakta, or our army, we're going to send to Kanakta. Pope Urbanus III has been died and has been succeeded by Pope Alexander II. Same name as us. Awesome. Alright, so now we're going to defeat this army as well, which puts the war score up to 41%. The war for Kanakta should go pretty quickly. Oh, good. Got some additional money, which will help us repay the Jews. Let's also go ahead and take care of this army up here. We've split our army in half, and now we're going to go up here and wipe these guys out before they can cause... Where are you going? Where are you going? Are you going to march all the way to my territory just to wreak havoc? Listen, you got another thing coming. War scores at 100. But you know something? I want the satisfaction of killing them first. <laughs> Bye. All right. Done. Whoa, lots of icons popped up that I haven't seen before. Okay, hang on. What's happening right now? Okay, we've had another son. He is no more a genius than his brother. Alright, so we can upgrade... that particular hang on and now we have a city here let's no not the county capital there problem solved so now we control connect let's let's take a look here out of curiosity let's see how far along we are in order to create the kingdom the empire rather of britannia we need to hold at least two kingdom titles and we need to control 80% of the de jure counties to create this title. We only control 31% right now. So we have a lot of conquering against England to do before we can declare ourselves the emperor. But what about the Kingdom of Ireland? We actually have enough territory to declare ourselves the King of Ireland. Now... A couple of things here to discuss for those of you uh, who aren't as familiar with it. And by the way, as I have said many times through this series, I am not much of an expert on Crusader Kings either, which is why I have welcomed advice and gotten a lot of really great comments. So I've both had expert players come in, uh, or players who are more experienced than me at the very least. I don't know if they refer to themselves as experts. It's very difficult to become an expert at this game, if not impossible. But uh, I've had not only them come in and give good advice, but also people who are around my skill level or lower who have been able to gain not only from watching the series, but reading the comments, which has been great. So what I'm about to say, take with a grain of salt and feel free to read the comments on this episode for additional clarification. So here's the thing with founding the Kingdom of Ireland. Right now, our highest title is King. Remember how earlier in the series, I was worried about any rebellion happening because it would split the realm or whatnot. I don't remember exactly what the circumstances were. Um, really, actually, it wasn't rebellion. It was having to do with succession. Turns out, because we did have a kingdom title and only one kingdom title, one person with every succession, even when there was a brother that was splitting the titles upon the death of a king with me, because there was a single kingdom title, I still maintained complete control over the entire land. It's just that the individual territories were governed by different vassals and different members of my family. If I found the Kingdom of Ireland, then yeah, I will actually, you know, have the ability to take over the Duchy of Mumu much, much, e much more easily because I will have a right. I will have a de jure right. I'll be the King of Ireland. I'll have a right to rule over all this land. However, my top two titles will both be kingdoms, which are equal. I won't have a single title, like an emperor title, to ensure that... Oh, look at how close that is right now. Mumu Pickland. To ensure... Sorry, distractions that uh, if, let's say, my king dies, that the other kingdom won't suddenly go to another character and no longer be under my control. So what you're probably going to see me do is not create the kingdom of Pictland until we are ready to actually create the empire of Britannia. And you're going to see me save up enough gold, save up enough gold to do both at once, to form the kingdom because we need a second kingdom in order to become the emperor and then you're going to see me establish the empire as soon as possible because that way 
even when there's a split, um, we won't have to worry about losing control of any land. Make sense? Okay, we're going to continue on. <laughs> if it doesn't make sense, feel free to ask me questions in the comment. And also, like I said, just consult the comment section because we've had some people following along that know what they're talking about. So, And you can also be one of those commenters if you like. Recognizing virtues and talents that others possess is truly a virtue. I'm truly blessed by having a spy master who is brilliant in rooting out plots. So let's reward the spy master. So we can definitely found the Kingdom of Ireland now. It's telling us that. But we're not going to. <laughs> How many men do we have compared to... Oh, wow. The King of Northumbria does not have a lot of men right now. You know what that means. We're going to launch a war for control of Galloway. All right, so this, that's happening right now. Wait, is it happening? Yeah, there it is. Okay. This is going to be awesome. I, I don't know why he has so few men, but we are just going to launch a war of opportunity here. And we're going to take over Galloway while he can't really fight back. We're going to unite all of our forces under one territory here. This is his army, the army of King Wolfmar. All right, we're going to merge this army and march on that one. Meanwhile, we have some other troops marching in. We can form a new commander, or we can promote a new commander. Alexander, our brother, is now a commander. Excellent, which means he could die in battle, which would suck. <laughs> Don't want that to happen. Elective succession for Pictlin, huh? How about some money so that you go away? I don't want that faction. Oh, I cannot. Interesting. It looks like there might be a condition for enabling primogeniture that I'm not going to have access to as easily as I thought. I'll have to pay attention to that once I'm not at peace anymore. I also... I haven't ruled for 10 years yet, so I, I literally don't have the option and won't for a while. We're going to pile some more troops in here to help out with this battle, which we are currently winning. There it is. And let's merge these troops together and send these guys to Galloway so they can begin taking over. We're already at 25% war score, so this is going to end pretty quickly. We're going to split the army in half so that they can chase down these guys. We can also claim Teviotdale as well. And we have enough room in our domain to do all of this, which is great. Can't do it right now because we haven't declared the war yet, but we can. This is Queen Judith of Kent, and she only has... Actually, she's got a good number of men, but I have more. <laughs> See, my, my as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode... Um, my men are regenerating, slowly but surely. It's just been a little hectic getting to that point. Good news, my lord. We have received credible reports of a recent sighting of the Great White Stag in the province of C. Saddle my horse. Good. So the Count of... The Isle of Man has actually... Oh, wait. Let's send these guys up here. The Count of the Isle of Man has had a a son, and the son is also Irish. So we're going to see if we can get the Scottish culture to come about here. We're going to keep hunting for the... Um, we're going to keep hunting for the Great White Stag at the same time as well. All right, so we're about to win another victory. We're up to 33% war score. Actually, it might go even higher in a second. Wait, what's happening here? Fruitlessly scouring the countryside, you come upon a small cottage in the wilds. As you knock, a beautiful young woman opens. She pauses, then gives you a warm, inviting look and says, It's very lonely out here. I wonder if you'll stay the night? 
<laughs> okay. Um, I could say, of course, which would give additional diplomacy <laughs> and give general opinion plus 10. Um, because basically it means that people would approve of me shacking up with this beautiful young lady in the woods. Um, I would also become lustful, which gives me additional intrigue, lower piety each month, and also m makes me more fertile. Or I could say I really shouldn't, and I would gain the chaste trait. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. I could actually use the extra diplomacy, and this guy has no negative traits. Um, the extra intrigue would be good for me, too. I mean, I mean, it just makes things more entertaining, right? I've, I've got to say, of course. Yeah, he's going to do it. <laughs> the next morning, you awake with a warm body next to you. You spent a long, pleasant night in the cabin, but it's time to get back to the world outside. Your companion looks you in the eyes, caresses you, and asks you to stay a little longer. Um, all right, so here's how this works. I can actually have a lover from this, and I don't want to do that because I don't want to crank out too many babies. I've already got two sons, so I'm going to be a real jerk and say, this was nice, but I have to go. <laughs> uh, Commander Shepard style, I have to go. Only it's Crusader Kings 2, and we're shacking up with beautiful young women in the middle of the woods. Slight difference, but same line. I have to go. Prince Bishop Arthur... Arthur hmm? of Noantia claims he would be a better court chaplain than Bishop Nyton and positions that he should be given the title of court chaplain in the kingdom of Pickland. Is that so? You would only be a better court chaplain by one point. I rule in the kingdom of Pickland, sir. Enough of your nonsense. Alessander definitely should be my chancellor, though. Holy crap, look at his diplomacy stat. Good lord. All right, so our brother is now our chancellor. Ergwist is our steward. Changing up our, uh... Okay, good. Yeah. Arthur's only better by one point, so screw that. I'd rather have my existing court chaplain than fire anybody. And we're gonna take these guys out as well. I wanna finish this war before I wrap up this episode, so we're gonna go a little bit longer here. Especially since we're about to take a break with the series, so I want to make sure we end on a good good moment here before Lord the Scots goes on hiatus for a brief while. A holy man came to court today to talk about matters of faith, but it soon became clear he held rather unorthodox views. Being a zealous defender of the church at all times, I believe I did the right thing when I gave the order to imprison a blasphemous pagan who dared criticize my faith and my church. Deus Volt. I was still shaking with rage at the pagan's blasphemous words when Sarah took the opportunity to whisper good work in my ear. Thank you, I really needed that. So that was just someone approving of my zealous nature. All right, so we have our entire army converging on this area again. How is their defending force? Mm, it's not worth assaulting the holding because we only have... We, we've got a number of men here, but they still have 771 defenders. And as long as we have... There's a pretty good rule of thumb, which is that if you, you have 10 times the number of defenders, then you can attack. Which would make the battle go much faster. But as it stands right now, we're letting all this time pass while this siege goes through. Hmm. Tell you what. Oh. <laughs> Alessander's leading troops at the moment, so I can't give him a job as a chancellor. But I will. Because I'm going to try and claim Osraig. And since he is so good with diplomacy, he should be able to. That's my hope. Oh. I had the game paused. <laughs> All right, so evidently the war's not over yet because we need to defeat the armies of this king here. Oh no, not another planned invasion. High Chief Emmett of Brunswick. This has never happened to me so much in Crusader Kings 2. It's a little bit silly. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade light infantry here, and then we'll, we'll proceed from there. 
Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna upgrade light infantry just to give better abilities in general. Okay. Oh, there you are. So we found two of his armies, which we can wipe out pretty quickly. Oh, don't tell me he's. Oh, now we're gonna play ping pong. There we go. Bye bye. So now we're gonna pay a visit to these guys. Oh, this is actually this is a Northumbrian revolt army. Interesting. So we're actually helping him by defeating this army. My wife, Moore Moomin, was captivated by the grace and strength of the hunting birds and begged me for a bird. A falcon would serve you well. Sure, let's make sure the, the queen's opinion of us is quite good. Trying to get our war score all the way up. We could take territory in a neighboring province, and that would definitely do it. We're at 78% now. We completely control Galloway, but because we have not fully defeated the armies of the King of Northumbria, we're still dealing with nonsense. Ninian is no longer marshal for King Alexander. Oh no, Alexander's ill. This needs to stop happening. This is... I'm tired of characters getting sick. Alright, let's invest in heavy infantry as well. Let's invest in legalism. We could definitely use level three, level 3 legalism, which helps us give some better laws. 80% war score. Alright, I guess we're just going to have to conquer some other areas of land here to make this war come to an end. This is the downside of fighting someone with more land than you. <laughs> So now we have to wait for this to siege down, and that should be the end of it. So who's fighting here? So Wessex actually appears to be invading Northumbria. Interesting. All the way from down here, Wessex is fighting in Northumbria. Brethekvirk Yuen is now of legal age. This is my sister. She became a charismatic negotiator. She is, she is betrothed, of course, to the 15-year-old prink Prince Ansovald of West Francia. I need this war to end soon, because this planned invasion is happening in like a year and a half. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do this. This is really annoying. Tell you what, I'm going to split this army up, and we're going to take multiple territories. In the same amount of time. The Holy Father has granted you the Bishopric of Tuam. We will serve you faithfully as a vassal, and will guide your rule in a Christian way. Thanks. Betrothed can marry. Let's go ahead and do that. Give permission to let that happen. We're at 90% war score. Apparently, one of the courtiers has been annoying my wife, more Moomin, and instead of asking me for help, she took the matter into her own hands and made sure the courtier would never know her again or he'd know the consequences. This is my brother, evidently. What on earth was she thinking? <laughs> you don't mess with Alessander. He's a better character than me. All right, so Prince Ansevald. This is the prince from, from West Francia. Strapping young lad. Mothering my sister. Uh, marrying. Mothering. <laughs> marrying my sister. All right, so with this victory impending here, we should get 100% war score. It's right around the corner. Come on. Just 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 come on. It's not How how is it possibly taking this long? There we go. All right. Offer peace, enforce demands. Excellent. I'm going to move my troops back into my army, or back into my territory. We can hold a grand tournament. Hmm. Good to know. So, we now control, this is called New Ancha when it's under Pictish rule. We control a good amount of land. 
Now what we need to do is have... Oh yeah, we need to disband these guys. Alright, now we can send this guy to fabricate a claim on Osraig, so we need to do that sooner rather than later, before the Duchy of Mumu can integrate this into their territory. And we'll have to see how that situation resolves itself when Lord of the Scots returns. For those of you who missed me talking about it in a previous episode, or maybe for some reason weren't paying too much attention at the beginning of this one, we're going to take a break from Lord of the Scots for exactly 20 days, and then we'll come back to it. I'm going to continue Eternal Empire in Total War Attila, where we are playing as the Eastern Roman Empire with some really cool mods that are just making the appearance of the Eastern Roman Empire be much, much more classically Roman. And so the entire purpose of the series is a true return to form and return to paganism and everything for the Eastern Roman Empire. We're going to fully conquer the map as Eastern Rome. And actually, in the last episode, we just fought our first battle with Attila, which is pretty interesting stuff. So I'm going to be coming back into... Um, we weren't fighting Attila directly, we were fighting the Huns. So I'm going to be coming back into that situation to see kind of how the fallout from that went. Because we won the battle, but we lost a lot of troops in the process. So we're coming back into that in a very interesting time. And then, of course, after that run of Eternal Empire is done, we will switch right back and continue Lord of the Scots uh, later on in July. Again, if you are watching this in the backlog, then you can ignore everything I just said. <laughs> because it doesn't, it doesn't apply to you. You can just keep watching to the next episode because it's already there. It's already waiting for you. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I upload new episodes in kind of a grand strategy or historical strategy type vibe every day at noon, Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus four, for those of you not in the States. And if you're not into grand strategy or historical strategy, even though you somehow made it to the end of this episode, I do science fiction, survival, and simulation type content in my 6 p.m. slot all the time. So again, thanks very much for watching. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you in a bit.